So in this video, we're going to talk more about the angular spectrum. Uh, so in the last couple of videos, we've been attacking wave propagation and we've been attacking diffraction through this idea of Huygens principle. So we have a slit, for example, or in general, some aperture function, which might be uh, amplitude or phase. So this is the x direction, this is the z direction. And we've been treating this slit as if it's composed of a bunch of infinitesimally small point sources. And each of those is emanating spherical waves, uh, which go like e to the j, k, r over r. And then we've been integrating these over x, so over our aperture direction. Uh, and in general, we've been including, we've been weighting these point sources by our aperture function dx. And then using this we figured out that the easiest way or uh, perhaps one of the more intuitive ways to think about wave propagation is perhaps not so much in terms of the aperture function itself but its angular spectrum so g of kx uh, or its spatial spectrum and uh, we figured out a transfer function for uh, if we're interested in what the pattern what the electromagnetic field pattern looks like here uh, let's call that g out of x, uh, we can calculate that just by multiplying g in of kx. So we take the Fourier transform of this aperture function. In the case of just a plain uh, open aperture like this, which looks like a rectangle function, it's going to look like a sink. So it's going to look like this sink function. We just take the Fourier transform and we multiply it by this transfer function h of free space. And I think we said h was something like e to the minus j k x s squared over 2d, I want to say, where x s is just the uh, screen coordinate, so the coordinate on our screen. And so this was kind of interesting. Uh, and we got this from the Fresnel integral. So we got this from the integral, from this integral, uh, making, the, uh, making the paraxial approximation the paraxial approximation or the small angle approximation that theta is much less than, I don't know, let's say, let's say pi over two, theta is much less than 90 degrees. And there might be some other coefficients out front, uh, I don't know, let's call this B naught, uh, but we're, we're gonna ignore that for now because it's not a function of XS. And to understand what it is, uh, you need to understand um, more advanced diffraction theory, which I'm not going into right now, probably make videos on it in the future. Now in this video, we're going to attack things a little differently. We're going to say if we want to figure out the angular spectrum of something, uh, or we want to figure out, let's say we have the angular spectrum. So we have g in uh, of kx, or the, the Fourier transform of our aperture function g of x. So maybe it's an aperture, maybe it's a ton of apertures, maybe we've got some phase thrown in there. And we just like to figure out directly uh, what the output is, so what the, uh, what the what the angular spectrum is at the output, or some screen uh, a distance d away. And so how do we do that? Well, uh, we, we said in the last video that the angular spectrum is nothing but, or can be interpreted as uh, a bunch of plane waves uh, of different angles. So maybe this plane, wave is, this plane wave is at some angle theta with respect to the axis. And this, pl this plane wave has a wavelength lambda, just like all of the plane waves that we're going to be dealing with. They have the same wavelength. Uh, and so we know that it's going to be propagating. If we want to figure out uh, how g in transforms to g out, all we need to figure out is how some arbitrarily angled plane wave propagates from the input plane to the output plane for some arbitrary kx value. So all we need to do is propagate a plane wave from this plane to this plane. And that's that's fairly straightforward uh, because we can actually write out the equation for what a plane wave, uh, how a plane wave behaves in space. So we said uh, previously, it's just e to the j. If, it's, if the plane wave is just propagating in the z direction, then it's kz minus omega t. But if the plane wave is propagating in some arbitrary direction, uh, it has some k vector, uh, where this k vector has some uh, kx component and some kz component, or you can write it using the angle as k times sine theta and k times cosine of theta. 
where this is the x component and this is the z component, then instead we can write this as e to the j uh, k vector dotted with r, where r is just x comma z uh, minus omega t. And I'm just going to drop the omega t's now because they're just hanging around and they're not giving us anything terribly, terribly useful. Uh, so we're just going to say goodbye. We're going to drop into phasor notation. Uh, and this is just equal to, if we actually carry out the dot product, so kx, kz dotted with xz, this is just e to the j, kx times x plus kz times z. And this is valid for all of space. But we're interested in what's happening uh, when we propagate from one plane. Oh, I don't know, we got a ghost appearing. Uh, we're interested in what happens when we pro propagate from one plane to another plane. So let's call this plane the z equals zero uh, plane. Maybe this is, so this is our z axis, and I'm just going to call this z equals zero. It might be, uh, we, we could call it whatever we want, but it's going to be easiest if we call it z equals zero. And this is just going to be z equals d. So initially, our plane wave starts at coordinate z equals zero and ends at coordinate z equals d, and nothing else changes about it. So let's just plug in the let's let's just plug those in for the plane wave. So if we have z equals zero, our plane wave becomes e to the j kx times x plus kz times zero, and so the kz drops out because it's multiplied by zero. And we're just left with e to the j kx times x. And this is for any arbitrary plane wave, so with some arbitrary kx. We haven't said what it is. Uh, now, if we plug in e to the if we plug in z equals d, so this was z equals zero. Uh, if we plug in z equals d, which means the plane wave has propagated by a distance d, uh, and we've assumed that it stayed at the same x coordinate. Uh, so if we plug in z equals d, we'll get e to the j kx times x plus kz times d. And we can just rewrite this as e to the j kx x, e to the j kz times z. Where this was our original plane wave, uh, which we can see over here, this was our original plane wave, this e to the j kx x term. So we can write our transfer function, or the thing that you need to multiply to get the output plane wave, is just this. It's e to the h is just e to the j kz times z. That's it. I guess we should put, uh, since we're propagating a distance d, we really should put d here. So e to the j kz times d. And this is the transfer function for propagating some distance d. But we're really not interested in kz. We're interested in kx. Because kx is what we've been working with this whole time. We've done our Fourier transform in terms of kx. We've got our output in terms of kx. Um, kx is really what allows us to do everything interesting. So we want to convert kz into kx. And we know that since the k vector is the same for an angle of, uh, or for, for a plane wave of any angle, or the, sorry, the magnitude of the k vector is the same, uh, we, we can write the magnitude as of the k vector uh, squared just as kx squared plus kz squared. That's just a that's just simple vector math. Uh, or the magnitude, we can rearrange this in terms of kz. So kz uh, squared is just equal to magnitude of the k vector squared minus kx squared. Or finally, kz uh, just by itself is just equal to the square root of, and I'm instead of magnitude of k squared, I'm just going to write k squared. Uh, magnitude of k is just equal to k, which is 2 pi over lambda. That's just a definitional thing. So k squared minus kx squared. And if we plug this back into our propagate by d function, we'll get that our transfer function for a plane wave of some uh, k value, and let's factor out, let's actually factor out a k. Uh, to make this even prettier, 1 minus kx squared over k squared. That should just be a k. 1 minus kx over k squared. Propagate by d is just equal to e to the j kd times the square root of 1 minus kx over k squared. And now if we Taylor series expand this square root term, so uh, 1 plus epsilon, uh, so 
one plus epsilon is approximately one plus one half epsilon, then this becomes e to the j k d times e to the minus j, uh, and now we've got a k x squared d divided by k, or divided by 2k. And this constant phase term is not super interesting. So it, it also showed up in our Fresnel, uh, Fresnel formulation. We're just going to drop this. It's not of interest to us right now. But the interesting part is this. This is exactly what we got for Fresnel propagation. This is exactly the same transfer function. And when I saw this, I was sort of like mind blown because we did two totally different things. Uh, on the one hand, we considered a slit as a bunch of spherical, independent spherical point sources. And on the other, we took the Fourier transform of that slit and then just propagated each individual plane wave. Uh, so each plane wave component, let's say, of that slit. And in each case, we ended up with exactly the same transfer function for propagation by a distance d. And it's this quadratic phase term. Uh, it's got a kx squared in, the, in this exponential. But I think you'll agree that this was way simpler. Uh, so just figuring out how one plane wave propagates from one screen to another screen is so much simpler then uh, figuring out, okay, how do we integrate all these point sources? And then how do we use some Fourier transform identities and uh, make, make the paraxial approximation? This is, I would say, infinitely simpler than that. And this gives us a much clearer picture of what's happening when we propagate electromagnetic fields through a system. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please give it a like below and subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, also please feel free to post those down below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.